Also said he could remember to the cloud. Yeah, well, we're going for it. Hey, everybody. It is my our absolute pleasure to introduce to you a longtime friend of mine, the hormone goddess herself. <laughs> <laughs> I still call you that, Gary. This I'll take Dr. it. This is Dr. Carrie Jones. Uh, Dr. Carrie and I met each other in, was it 16? Six, I think 16 or 17. We were both teaching at a conference in California and turns out we were kindred spirits and we've been, we've been friends ever since. And to me, that's when the, the nickname I gave her was the hormone goddess. And to me, it stuck. No one else seems to, on your social media seems to know that, but um yeah, so it's it's an absolute pleasure to to have you on. Uh, we are calling April uh, Women's Health Month, and Kim has been working very hard on um, some insights that I'm excited for the two of you to talk about. Um, but before we launch into like the whole hormone thing, I'm just going to give you my input of what I tell my patients, and then I'm going to let you two take it from there. Um, what I tell people when I see them is the number one, like the root of all hormone problems comes back to blood sugar. And if you don't help someone regulate their blood sugar first, the rest of it really doesn't matter because that's going to upset everything else, everything else the rest of the system. And that's really what our metabolic reset program is doing for people. So when they come back to us, yeah, they've lost you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds, but they'll also, also notice all these changes in their in their cycle and in their hormones just because we're getting blood sugar to regulate. So from my male perspective, that's my <laughs> Neanderthal knuckle dragging perspective. That's, that's where I come from. Uh, but Kim, you've been working on this whole like eating for your cycle, working out for your cycle. And I thought it would be a lot of fun to put the two of you together and I, I will interject if I have something to interject. So, um, but Kim, tell us a little bit about like what you're doing as far as cycles and then we can take it from there. Okay. Well, basically just introductory knowledge about, oh, there's certain foods that you should eat during different phases of your cycle. There's certain, you shouldn't, I eat typically when I started CrossFit in 2015, I literally done CrossFit every day since, like never taking a break. Like just, I just do it all the time. On the flip side of that, I also have, extremely horrible cramping, very long, painful periods, super heavy bleeding, yada, yada, yada. I just thought I've always been told like, well, bad luck for you. Guess one of your, guess your mom had that. Um, and my daughter had the same thing. So I literally have just always been ignorant about it. Like, oh, I guess that's just like the luck of the draw for me. I never thought there was something I could like actually do about it. I wasn't going to go take medication or get on anything. So I was like, oh, I guess I just have to live with it. Then I guess really Ashley, my daughter started it. She started reading into this stuff. She's taking certifications like in holistic nutrition and stuff right now mm -hmm. and kind of started dappling into a little bit of the hormone stuff. So we were like, well, let's just try it. So we literally just tried it like two months ago and like changing. It's not even really changing what we're eating because we eat those foods anyway, just changing when we eat them, doing a little bit of the seed stuff and literally so if I'd gone through two or three cycles since we started that, I'm not sure, but literally no cramping already. Like I said, it could take a while for it to start, but literally I've had zero cramping. My period has only lasted four days and it's not been heavy. So I'm like, amazing. Okay. And same, same for the daughter who literally our doctor told us when she was a teenager, oh, you need to take my doll and ibuprofen and drink a Coke. That was her remedy for getting her through her cramping. And I just remember being a mom being like, I know that doesn't sound right, but like, she's literally dying. She's missing school. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. So that was like our go-to for a little while. And so we were like, there's gotta be a better way. <laughs> so I don't still understand like all the science behind it other than like, okay, at this point, I know like these hormones are low. So that's why I'm eating these certain foods or mm -hmm. not as good to like work out super heavy when this hormone is high or low, like that. But like, I'm talking very basic knowledge. My knowledge is simply, wow, this is actually working. So I'd love to like teach people. Oh, and with weight loss, I, I don't track my weight like our weight loss people do like religiously every day, but I do enough to know that like, I'm crazy hungry now. I know like 
certain phases, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm starving. I used to always be like, what is wrong with me? Like, why am I so hungry? And mm-hmm. I kind of be bad at myself. Cause I'm like the person that's like the perfectionist beat myself up. If everything doesn't go exactly mm-hmm. according to Kim's plan. And so I didn't understand why I was so hungry. And then reading this stuff, I'm like, oh, like it's a- <laughs> and like I should feed myself more. So probably eating more during that time helped with some of this stuff too. Not even just the types of food, but the fact that I just gave myself permission to eat more. And then what was the other epiphany with the weight? Oh, but then I did notice like one day, like my weight was literally up like three pounds. And then like the next day it was like down two. like, it was just pretty erratic. And so I'm like, we have these patients that are like, what is happening? Cause I should be losing every day on this program. And it's like, Oh, well, you're a cycling woman and you're definitely not going to follow like this perfect trend. Right. So that's when we really wanted to incorporate into the program, like a, to help them feel better, but B to also realize like your weight's not going to be like your husband's loss who they can work out whenever they want, eat however they want. And their weight just keeps going down. Like we don't, we're not that way. So I'd love Which for is... you to jump into like the why. <laughs> <laughs> All the behind the scenes. Even yeah. you know, from, from my perspective, let's just start like day one of the cycle. Here's your, here's, you know, phase one. What are, what's the first phase? Let's go through those phases. Brady likes it when we're like, it's luteal time. We're in the follicular phase right now, babe. We are eating this. <laughs> Brady is now a whole new expert on things. He didn't really expect to be a whole expert on. <laughs> you, you laugh, Carrie, but these things happen. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm married. <laughs> Um, the thing about hormones, well, first of all, the women's women's cycle, um, because of our cycle, for those who are cycling, we were left out of research for years. When in fact, we're largely still left out of research because researchers know that our changing cycle, our changing estrogens and progesterones, um, will screw up their cycle or screw up their research study because we're not consistent. And so they for a long time, stuck predominantly, obviously, with males um, for a variety of reasons, but the cycle being one of them, or menopausal women, um, or women on birth control, or it's somewhere their, their cycle was really controlled. It wasn't until very recently where they were more open to including women who were cycling, but even then, on a, in a research study, they don't necessarily differentiate, like, women in the luteal phase experience this, women in the follicular phase experience this, or this is the, the change in between. And so the female cycle, um, I let's see here. I've been in the field since 1999. So 24, almost 24 years. I started in July of 1999 in this field. And so I learned about cycling, cycle syncing a long time ago from my mentors and my elders. Um, and I'm really grateful to social media. Social media has pros and cons, but some of the pros uh, are that this information can get out, right? And like books can be written, but then people who are on social media can learn more about this versus just asking their practitioner about it who knows nothing or just like you were like, take ibuprofen, drink a Coke and it's your luck of the draw. Sorry about your luck. Because our hormones, so there's two main phases, the follicular phase and the luteal phase, but then we break it down really into four phases. So when we get our period, that's the menstrual phase, but really it's the follicular phase. Follicular meaning we're building growing follicles that contain the egg if we were wanting to get pregnant. And then in the middle phase, we have ovulation where you release the egg. And then, then, then we move beyond that. That's where we pump out a bunch of progesterone. It's our nesting phase through the uterus is getting all primed in case you wanted to get pregnant. So that's the third phase. And then we're back to the end. We're like the week leading up to your period PMS phase, so to speak. Now, because of this very controlled up down of your estrogens, up down of your progesterones, it's like being on a controlled roller coaster. That it is helpful, just as you said, to know where are you in your phase, to know are you more or less insulin sensitive? Are you more or less able to lift heavy or do explosive CrossFit things? Or are you better doing stretching? Are you more or less able to handle? intermittent fasting. If you're an intermittent faster, are you more or less able to sleep at this time? So, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And by understanding just that basic as you and your daughter have figured out, just understanding that basic, um, level, which is all I wish we were all taught in school from a very young age, (laughs) right. Would make is makes a huge difference. Even things I work with athletes and 
you know, as we get close to our period, we get clumsier. Our shift in progesterone shifts our thermoregulation, so how hot or cold we are, how easily we cool down, um, our salt water balance. And so even things like, you know, my, my dancers or my athletes, my runners, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, I, I find that I'm tripping. I'm not as coordinated. And it applies to the average everyday woman too. I mean, I have, I am not allowed to have nice stem wear because guaranteed I'm going to break it. I'm going to <laughs> like the couple of days leading up to my period, I will inevitably drop it and break it. So I admire beautiful stem wear and glasses from afar but I don't have it in my house. And I've had so many women reach out to me and say, Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. And I was like, it's, it's totally a thing. Our ability to understand where we are in space, um, whether you are in your kitchen, putting away dishes and drop a glass, or whether you're on a soccer field, trying to pass a soccer ball to your teammates, your hormones actually play a big influence in that. And so to eat to that or fast to that, or how you exercise to that, uh, the supplements you take really, truly does make an impact. Now, the great thing is it doesn't take much if you, as you and your daughter found out. And we can, like we can, I tell my, like for athletes, like you can train to it. It's, it, this isn't the lot in life you were given. It doesn't matter how much you do or don't exercise or, you know, what level you are at. If you know the couple of days leading up to your period, you're clumsy, then you're going to be really careful, you know, if you're doing stuff in your house or in your garden or, you know, what have you, or if you are an athlete, if you know that you can do more explosive movements in the first part of your cycle, then that's when you're going to hit CrossFit and feel a freaking amazing, or that's when you're going to do your box jump. So that's when you're going to do kettlebell and be like, oh, I feel so good. But then you'll know as you get on the other half of your, of the whole month that you're going to be like, I don't understand. I could box jump two weeks ago or a week ago, I could totally lift this kettlebell and now I've just dropped it or now it hurt. You know, I feel like I'm going through quicksand, but in your, and so what do we do? We beat ourselves up just like right. you said, <laughs> but by understanding like, Oh, it's a shift in hormone. I'm actually higher in progesterone now. So this is not my goal, lower in estrogen. And it's like, all right, I'm not going to do those things. And by just even understanding these little basics, one, we don't have to beat yourself up anymore. Right. Two, it makes a whole lot of sense of like, how come last week I could, and this week I can't. Um, then it, it just makes being female so much easier in life totally. for sure. Totally. And if this information, as I said, I was out at a much younger age, we would do so much better, be so much better. Think of all the ways we as women could help our symptoms, fix ourselves, right. know what to do if this was grand knowledge. Right. I think that's the thing. It's just like, I mean, I beat myself up forever. I mean, granted, that's just kind of my personality, which is horrible, but in the gym specifically, yeah, like, you know, angry at myself and talking bad about myself, which then just leads to a whole nother cascade of, of problems versus cool. knowing like, oh, it's so like literally the past month, it's like, you know, so not ready to the gym and I'm like doing yoga in the bedroom, but I'm like, wow, I feel amazing. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. well, even think that last, the last injury you had. Right. right. So what we're saying is you have a phase where you are clumsier than others. So what phase is that? The fourth week. So as you get close to your period, PMS week. So what is the hot, what is the dominant hormone during that time? Generally your progesterone is a lot do more dominant and then it is starting to fall. So you have your progesterone rises in week three mm -hmm. and sort of peaks between weeks three and four, and then starts to come back down again. So that higher progesterone changes saltwater balance, changes things in thermoregulation in the brain, changes well, a lot of this for us. That saltwater balance is it. Mm -hmm. Because I'll bet you if we dug deep enough, we would find some correlation with that and function of the cerebellum that control mm -hmm. balance and coordination, spinal muscles and eye movements. And all of a sudden, Kim is out there in that phase in the gym, swinging a kettlebell that she has swung a million times. And lo and behold, her paraspinal muscle goes, nope, we're not doing this today or tomorrow or the next day. It literally collapsed like, the floor. It, I couldn't get up. And I was like, this is so stupid. That it's just, that makes total yeah, sense yeah. now. Yeah. Wow. I have runners, um, like Olympians that I've worked with. And they're like, last week? You know, I could get up, push off the block, take off running, not a problem. This week I tripped. I was like, is your period starting? <laughs> and I don't mean to laugh, but like, I'm like, mm-hmm. 
But again, we understanding this is helpful. And for the people who go, well, in that case, an athlete, an Olympian, you can't change the Olympics because you're getting your period, but you can train to it. If you know the week before your period, you are more clumsy. So Kim, if you're like, I'm doing CrossFit this week, you will just have that awareness of like, I have to be very careful. I have to be very aware of my balance. I have to be careful of the weight load that I pick up because I may not be able to handle it like I could or train up to it. So you can right. train into it. It's not like you get to that week and then you're like, oh, no, you know, Carrie and Kim said I shouldn't do that this week. It's like, no, you just put your awareness to it. Right. That you are back. more likely to trip, fall, hurt, unbalance. So be mindful of your weight. Be mindful of where you are in space. Be mindful of these things. Right. And well, it makes a big, big difference. Huge. <laughs> and I mean, just save injury. <laughs> I'm sure. Like, I'm sure. Yes. That- like, yes. it's like, oh, that's what injuries happen. That was, I was reading um, Dr. Stima's book, like yeah. the body. And yeah. she talked about that. Like, oh, well, injuries are going to happen during this time. So like, be conscious, like yep. lighter weight. Like, not that you can't lift, right? Like she's yeah. like pro lifting all the time, but like not heavy weight. You're not going to try to get one rep max. Like, Yeah. So Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. even things like, so when you're estrogen dominant, you're more estrogen dominant in the first part of your cycle. So at the end of week one, headed into week two of your cycle, just leading up to ovulation, estrogen plays a big role in your ligaments and tendons. And so here's where you're more likely to blow out your ACL. So now you're box jumping or you're pivoting quickly, um, sprinting, but like not linear sprinting back and forth, cone to cone sprinting. So you twist and because of estrogen's effect on ligaments and tendons, that portion of your cycle, you twist on your knee and all of a sudden you're like, I tore my ACL or I hurt an injury, an old injury that I had there or my Achilles tendon. And it's, it's that second, that area because of estrogen's effect. And so by just knowing these little things of like, okay, I'm not going to push it so hard, or I'm going to switch the type of exercise, or if I you know, am doing CrossFit, I'll just lower the intensity, lower the reps, be mindful. Cause I sure don't want to blow up my ACL this week on my knee right. <laughs> and then just get back into it the week after, you know, give it a week right. and then go back to it. So that's, okay. that's week one, the week following your period, the week following your period. Through- so we, when we get our period, our hormones are very low estrogens. We have a couple progesterone, progesterone metabolites. They're very, very low. You're bleeding. So you can kind of do anything in that week for a lot of, for a lot of us, then estrogen starts to climb, starts to rise week, day five, six, seven, going up, up, up your roller coaster hill until you get right before ovulation, you get all this estrogen. And that's when you have to be the most concerned about a, you know, a knee blowout or Achilles tear or something like that is the week before the day, the couple of days before ovulation. Now, some women don't, you know, we should just like right from the beginning, some women don't know anything about their cycle, whether they choose not to track, they don't know to track. They just assume it's going to come every month, but they don't know. Or maybe they have really regular cycles. Maybe they have PCOS or something else. So the first thing first is track. When do you get your period? How often do you get your period? And the next thing is, do you ovulate? Do you feel yourself ovulate? Do you get symptoms of ovulation? Do you get vaginal mucus changes, you know, do you get twinges? Do you get breast tenderness for a day or two? You know, there's, there's a lot of little things. If you're wearing a wearable, like an Apple watch or an aura ring, do you notice changes in your temperature it should go up when you ovulate? So these little, and none of this is expensive. This is what I love, right? Like getting a free app or a calendar and marking <laughs> when your period starts costs no money. And, and just having that information alone can be eye-opening for a lot of for a lot of women of like, oh, I thought I was every month. And it turns out I'm every 34 days or I'm every 26 days. And I was just always kind of guessing, but by just starting there, then you can figure out your weeks. Then you can think to yourself and it's rough, you know, then you're like, oh, I'm, I can tell I'm ovulating for whatever reason. I have twinges or my mucus is changing. So I'm going to be very careful with explosive movements. Oh, I'm getting close to my period. I'm having cravings, kind of moody, breasts are hurting. I'm going to ease up on exercise. I'm going to be mindful of, you know, not, you know, tripping balance, things like that, what I'm eating. Hmm. 
So to and help you say on when you're actually on your period, you can do more because that's the one I feel like I read the most conflicting information on where some are like walking, stretching yoga and others are like, but see, it depends how you feel. Cause some women, their first couple of days of their period, it's like, um, they just feel yucky. So walking, stretching yoga is better for them. Not necessarily because of their hormone levels, okay, but because yeah. of their, the mindset that they're in okay. other women get their period and like everything is better. They're like, hallelujah. The, you know, like it started and I feel amazing. I'm back to myself. I'm not bloated. I feel great. My skin's gotten better. So then I'm like, yeah, well, then you're that person that you, you okay. know, go for it, go for it. Yeah. So for me, how do you feel your first couple of days? If you feel kind of heavy and blah and achy, you know, sure. Go ease up, do yoga. Um, but if you're not, if you're the opposite, go for it if you want to. Okay. Hmm. Yep. And what about yep. food wise? Do you have any like great wisdom on like the food? <laughs> great wisdom <laughs> in general? I feel I'm of the opinion. Women are generally under proteined, meaning we, um, eat like birds or, you know, we'll have a salad with a little bit of chicken on it. And we, you know, we're like, Oh, it's salad, it's vegetables, it's filling, but then it's just a little four ounces of protein. When in fact, women need a lot more protein than we think we do. And especially as we get older, as we especially hit perimenopause and menopause, um, man, that the more within my friends, myself, former patients who are, I'm like, we really need to increase your protein. Like you really aren't getting enough protein. They're like, oh my gosh, I feel the world. I feel the world, the difference. I have so much energy. I you, like, it's helping with weight. It's helping with blood sugar stabilization. So just across the board, quality protein, I think is important. In the second half of our cycle, after ovulation, the luteal phase, as we get close to our period, that's our nesting phase. That's when we're building up the inside of our uterus. Should we, the, you know, the body doesn't know Right. <laughs> that you are or aren't trying to get pregnant that month, you know, like whether it's like I have zero desire to get pregnant, like none, but my body doesn't know that. So every month my uterus is like, this month, girl, I'm like, <laughs> not this month, girl. No. So to with that building nesting phase, that's, you will often read about like adding in more complex carbohydrates right. to help because a lot of people are into fasting, intermittent fasting, long fasting, they're keto, they're, um, uh, they're uh, carnivore, right? And then they feel great initially. And then they're like, oh, I'm actually having all these hormonal symptoms. Like I was great the first three to six months, but now I'm like, like my cycles are changing or I'm not ovulating or my, like my, the quality of my periods are kind of sucking now because you don't get that good progesterone. And so by adding in, even in just that half of the cycle, adding in more complex carbs, squash or, you know, sweet potatoes or right. you know, just starchy mm -hmm. carbs, starchy veggies, I'm not necessarily saying hamburger bun and fries, although, <laughs> you know, live your life, That's but not, yeah, just you know, so, but like adding, just adding that in, even in my keto carnivore people, I'm like, just try it just in those two <laughs> weeks, like add in a little bit more. And I'm not saying for sweet potatoes, you know, maybe it's just a, one sweet potato or half a sweet potato or, you know, depending what it is or starchy carbs can make a difference. Yeah. In some of some people, I mean, you know, I have very, I have patients that don't do carnivore and, and keto. And then I had patients that were like all in, all they eat is meat. It's helped whatever inflammation they had, or it's helped blood sugar, insulin, but it did, did it's, I don't think it's designed for forever um, in a cycling woman, because I tend to get some of the fallout feedback of like, ah, it's been six months and now my periods were good. And now they're not. I'm like, we have to, I think we need to add in more carbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In that That's section I found for myself where I yeah. was more like, I wouldn't say I like restrict carbs, but I mean, just giving lupus, right. I live mm -hmm. paleo, but it's like, I definitely had to add in more. And then I was like, Oh, so I'm eating more. I'm eating a little yeah. bit of food. Oh, now I have like, I still had energy. I didn't have cramps. I didn't feel crappy. Right. It was, the quality of my period was way better. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. I needed to eat more. So, and some women, depending on what's going on, you know, some women might be listening to this and be like, I have great periods. I don't change my exercise or my diet. Like everything's fine. And I'm like, that's great. I'm super glad you're God's favorite. That's wonderful. But for a, for a lot of people listening, they may think they're okay. But when they tune in, they're like, you know, actually, I just thought that was normal. Like, I just thought it was normal yeah. to have really bad cramps. I thought it was normal to have a full seven to 10 days of PMS. I thought 
Right. Yeah, I, my mom had it. My sister, like, I didn't know any better. I thought, you know, how's your periods? They're normal, quote unquote, but really right. they have all this going on. And by understanding, it's literally a up and down roller coaster from week to week, day to day, um, which means like your exercise isn't static. Your food choices shouldn't be static. Like all these things should, unlike men who don't really cycle, they can do the same thing day in and day out, which is why it's so effective for them. And their decline in body fat is generally more consistent and linear. Whereas because we constantly deal with the roller coaster, we have to adapt to it. Hmm. Right. I'm not saying it's fair or fun. I, you know, whoever designed the female body, I have a few words. I just a few tweaks, upgrades, 2.0s I'd like to change, but <laughs> it is helpful to I know when I explain things. these to women, they're like, nobody told me. I had no idea. And right. Yeah. And that's what I think too. And the other thing I feel like we're trying to teach people is I don't think people listen to their body at all. Anyway. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Right? So it's like, now people are like, oh, turns out like cheese makes me totally sick. I'm like, yeah. And you've been eating it for like the last hundred years and like had no idea it made you sick. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think yeah. that's one thing I try to teach from the get-go is just like, start paying attention to how your body feels. Cause like they're restricted from foods at the beginning of this. And then we add them back in. And it's like, if you want to know how you feel adding them back in, you got to know how you feel when you took them out, you know, right. You think, right. Um, so for girls, like, did you have cramps? Did you have low energy? Did you yeah. have, it's like, Oh, I've never paid attention. Like, I could and not it gets, pay it, attention, but it gets normalized, right? It's because yeah. it's so common, common and normal are not the same thing. Right. So when, just like you, or you, if like my mom had horrific cramps, heavy periods. So in my family, that was normalized. Right. Guess what? That's what the Jones family gets. Sorry about that. So until I got into medicine, was I like, wait a minute, come in. Sure. Normal. No, that's not how it's supposed to go. So when you, again, when you're, when we're like, I'm like, tell me about your periods. And a woman says they're fine. She may truly believe that because right. her whole life, everyone has told her that's normal mm -hmm. for this family, for you, like for everyone, her best friends. Like, do you get PMS? I get PMS. Yeah. I get horrible PMS. All right. I'm not weird. You're not, it's just common. It should, but it shouldn't be normal. But, and so you're right by saying like, all right, let's start tuning in right which and it doesn't take long you know sometimes people roll their eyes like this is extra work I'm already busy I'm like oh I'm just asking you like a month or two you know three tops I just need you to tune in see how you feel right and then we'll evaluate and just like you said I mean oh my gosh I would have women come back and go did you know like this is what's happening in my body I'm like I figured <laughs> <laughs> I actually did know. I've been doing this a long time yep <laughs> So I, I think we have to emphasize here what is nor you know normal. It, a lot of that is considered normal because it sells birth control pills. Yeah, or pain pills, or pain yeah. Pills. So it's, absolutely you know, that aspect of it. But I'm just thinking, like in in terms of broad strokes, you know, this the the metabolic program that we have is we actually put people on a uh, on a on a natural on a whole food diet where they're eating. Yeah you know, four to six ounces of protein with four ounces of fruit and four ounces of, of low glycemic fruit and four, four ounces of low glycemic vegetables, you know, for two meals a day. So we have them intermittent fasting, but maybe for these younger, you know, the, for the cycling females, we need to look at it more like, hey, we need to bump up your protein. Right. And then on the second half of your phase, we need to, you know, go ahead and mix in some quinoa, some sweet potatoes, have mm -hmm. some more carbs during that second half. Am I, am I understanding that correctly, Carrie? You, yeah, you are. And again, when in programs, this is what I tell people when they shift stuff, usually it's one to three months, let's say, you know, so you're trying to like, not shock the system, but you're like, look, we're going to overhaul what we've been doing. This hasn't been working. So we're going to try something else. So in your program, if you're doing your program one to three months, and there, people are getting amazing results. That's fantastic. Now, if you were to continue that program, let's say for a year in a cycling woman, she may not feel great. She may notice her cycles right. are eventually starting to like, ah, oh, we cannot sustain this. Like this isn't nourishing enough because in a cycling woman, everything feeds back to the brain is to, am I safe enough and healthy enough to get pregnant? Again, I'm not saying you want to get pregnant. I don't want to get pregnant. 
But every single month, my hypothalamus is looking around at what I'm doing, what I'm eating, the stress I'm in, the time zone I've traveled to, if I've been sick, you know, how am I sleeping, et cetera, et cetera, and going, is this, am we safe enough and healthy enough to have a normal cycle this month? If you wanted to get pregnant, you could. And so when those things shift, I mean, I have tons of patients who are like, I went from the West Coast to the East Coast and my cycle, my period came early or my period came late or I skipped a month. I'm like, exactly, because it was viewed as a stressor to your body even though you're just traveling for fun. And as a result, it threw up your cycle. So in weight loss programs or metabolic resets for blood sugar insulin, the blood sugar insulin part's super healthy. It's super nourishing. Like that's amazing. But again, if you were like, somebody's like, I'm going to do this for a year. It's like, Ooh, a year in your program, (laughs) maybe a little more. Like at that point, then I would say, okay, we're going to do it initially, get you totally insulin sensitive back to normal glucose, you know, metabolically healthy. And then we're going to add in more protein, add in some more carbs in the luteal phase, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That's yeah. what I generally encourage. What, that's perfect to know. Like, cause we have people that come back on and do it again, but I've also found people that were just like two months in and now they're kind of starting to experience like, Oh, this doesn't seem to be working. Yes. So I'm like, okay, well let's have breakfast, you know, yeah. or yeah. You're not gonna so those eat- are the people that you're like, okay, We're going to, now we're going to work to your cycle. We're going to first add in more protein in the first half. And we're going to add in a little more complex carbs in the second half. Yeah. Would you reduce their protein in the second half? Mm -mm. No, I just think in general, women are often lacking in real true protein. Okay. And I, you know, obviously everybody that's a broad, as you said, that's a broad stroke, just observation, having seen a lot of patients in my career. Is that, um, you know, they're like, well, I had one egg and some oatmeal in the morning. I'm like, <laughs> not enough, <laughs> not yeah, enough protein, exactly. you know, that's it, huh? <laughs> my doctor I says I should be open for bar my and it has, for my right, heart health. Right. <laughs> for, my <laughs> heart health. <laughs> for my heart health, exactly. Or they're like, I'm like, what are you for lunch? They're like, well, I have a protein bar, you know, it has six grams of protein. I'm like, oh, <laughs> but it's special no. to me. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. We need it. We yeah, with, re- with red food diet, no big deal. <laughs> no big deal, right? Yeah, and the same goes for intermittent fasting. I'm a huge fan. I love intermittent fasting, but I have gotten, thank goodness, the two big, 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 big fasting experts in our field um, for females, Mindy Pels, Dr. Mindy Pels, and Cynthia Thurlow are good friends of mine, and so they have both written books, mm-hmm. and they're um, we have Mindy and I especially have gone I've done a lot of back and forth around the menstrual cycle and fasting for females. Because some people are get really big into long fasts. You know, they want to do a 24-hour fast or a 48-hour fast. And some people are just dipping their toe into intermittent fasting. They're like, oh my gosh, I've never gone 12 hours without eating. I'm constantly snacking. You know, I eat from the time I get up to the time I go to bed. And so everywhere in between that can fit into a your menstrual cycle as well. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've happened upon some of their like websites and stuff. And I was looking at that's when Mindy's I started- hilarious. Mindy's a chiropractor. Cynthia is wonderful as well, but Mindy's a chiropractor and, um, Brady, you would love her sense of humor. She is funny as heck. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I just adore her. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I started thinking like, Oh, like maybe don't fast during, you know, like it's not always good. That that was even for me. Like I typically fast breakfast just because I feel good. I feel yeah. good doing yeah. that. But then I was like, not this week. I am starving. And I used yes. to just like, ignore it. Like, well, right. you're fasting, so you don't eat. And then it was like, oh, I'm just going to listen to my body when I'm starving. I'm going to eat it. Like, and Because I- what happens when you ignore it, right? You're, you ignore it. So your cortisol goes up. Your blood sugars drip, dip down. And cortisol's main job in the body is to increase glucose. That's cortisol's main job. So you ignore, I'm I'm not going to eat. I'm going to continue to sit breakfast, even though I'm hungry. Even all the signals are being sent out everywhere. I'm hungry. So cortisol is like, oh, geez. So cortisol has to go up to uh, glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, make you some glucose. So you have blood sugar dysregulation, right? Until you, and so now you have this glucose, cortisol glucose dance until you actually eat. When, if, if you know you're hungry, just eat. Right. And then glucose is happy. Cortisol is happy. Adrenaline's happy. Everybody's happy. Now, right. I mean, maybe like, cause some people go, well, I do, I do intermittent fasting, 16, eight. So I do 16 hours of no eating. I'm like, Hey, look, maybe try 14 hours in that luteal phase. Mm-hmm. Go 13 hours. I'm not saying eat every two hours. I'm just saying wow. 
widen your eating window a little bit. If you don't normally eat till noon in the luteal phase, maybe eat at 10, 10 30. Right. Make a big difference. And that's what I found for myself when I realized like, oh, I still gone 12 hours, mm-hmm. 14, like, cause we finished dinner at seven o'clock. I don't eat again. So you know, I'm talking yeah. about was hungry at like nine 30. It's not yeah. like yeah. I was hungry at 5. AM, you know, yeah. like yeah. I ate at midnight or something. So like, that's why I keep trying to tell you like, you just want a decent time where you're not eating. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I had the one patient who was like, well, I read that it's 18 hours is the best. I'm like, well, not for everybody. Like, well, and so that's where fasting gets really interesting because that in, in some of the literature, they'll tell you at like what hour mark is happening in your body. So like at this hour mark, you know, like 18, 18, 20 is we get higher then we get into uh, like the dopamine reset and autophagy and like right. gut lining support and all this stuff. And if that's the the goal, then use it to your in your cycle in those appropriate days. Mm-hmm. It's it's not an everyday thing. It's it's you know you you just use it <laughs> you just you use it occasionally. You you use it when you need it for or or where it lines up in your cycle. So. Like I do longer, I'm definitely more, sometimes, sometimes meetings, um, I'm intermittent fasting by default because, you know, meetings start at like eight in the morning and then I have no time to eat. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm doing a long intermittent fast today. Thank you to my schedule. Wonderful. Um, but I can do that easily, easier in my follicular phase. In my luteal phase, I know I have to eat. So I plan <laughs> better around it, but I just got more autophagy and more stimulation and more, you know, in the first part and then the second part my uterus is happier. My brain is happier. So mm, I just right. go, we, you know, I go back and forth, I flip back and forth and it, I, and that's good enough for me, for me. Right. I'm like, that's, that's that fine. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. Again, so yeah. I think what happens is people read or somebody online, usually male are like, you have to get to 20 hours or 22 hours before you can get all these great benefits. And it's like, well, it's easier for men. They don't cycle. And if you were already set up for blood sugar dysfunction, not eating in cortisol dysfunction, right? Going like going from eating all the time <laughs> to I'm going to, you know, this expert online said to go 20 to 24 hours without eating to stimulate all these things, man, they crash and burn. They feel terrible. Right. Cause they've never done any kind of, they've never done they're, yeah. yeah. Their eating window is all day long. The kitchen is always open. Right. Yeah. So I don't ever want people to feel bad when they're like, well, I read this expert online said, I'm like, Oh, context. context. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's a good way to say it. Yeah, That's a good for way to sure. Say it for people. Wow. Cool. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Brady loves it too. He likes it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Brady has it easier. My husband has it easier. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. you're you're just pretty. Your testosterone. Just, I mean, your testosterone goes up in the morning, but like you don't, you don't, you don't have a 28 ish day cycle. Men can menstruate. Just look at Google. That is true. <laughs> that is that is yes. <laughs> yes that's always my go-to. that's my biologically go-to. born yes. yes you in particular <laughs> it's about 72 days to make a sperm ish so you know men cycle it's just a little bit longer and what you're <laughs> what you're putting out yeah <laughs> that's awesome I know. anything else we need to cover no i mean we could talk for days so <laughs> yeah, well, all right would you be up to a part two yes of course of all course. right awesome, awesome. I think my computer, my computer's about had enough. It's so. like <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, but it didn't kick out. It's still recording. We're yes. still recording. We're still good. Yeah, That's Carrie, good. you are amazing. Uh, Thanks you too. We've been talking now for seven years about getting together again, and it still hasn't happened. Hey, this is together. Uh, <laughs> maybe we just need I to know. go to Washington. You're just the next state over. Yeah. Jump over. All right, trip. Road trip. Road trip. <laughs> Knock on your door next weekend. I know. <laughs> I'll be home. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, for real. Thank you so much. You're nice to see you both. Time. All right. We'll see you. All right. See ya.